welcome to Getting Raw with Richard Mark Turnpia. Today I am with Dan Henderson. Welcome along. Thanks, Richard. For those who don't know Dan Henderson already, uh, he's a leader in the industry. He's got a few different businesses, but I think his core business and his strength in the industry is the succession and the growth of kettlebells in Australia. Um, business is called Australian Institute of Kettlebells. Uh, you're targeting, you know, you're in gyms, you're, you're doing, um, you're always on the road, Melbourne, Brisbane, whenever I speak to you, always doing events for trainers, events for personal trainers. And I really want to know today, I want to know, I want to get really straight to the, the guts of it. I want to understand, you know, kettlebells has, I guess, come a pretty long way in the last couple of years. And um, it's really, a, it's a full business now for you guys. You're, you're, you're giving courses out. When a couple of years ago, we never had such things. So we did, but they weren't really mainstream to personal trainers. Now you see kettlebells in fitness first. You'll see them in mainstream gyms before they weren't around. And um, I know that you've had challenges as well of getting these kettlebells approved and um, your sessions to, to the audiences. So tell me a bit more about the whole kettlebells and where it came from and why you're so passionate about for yeah, excellent. Thanks, Richard. Uh, I guess where it started uh, for me was three years ago, the journey, and we I was using kettlebells a lot in my own training. Yep. My business partner was doing the same, and we just loved the kettlebells. We were getting great results in our own training. Uh, we were implementing them in our own personal training, and clients loved them. And more importantly, they were getting great results. And uh, so I began a search of, of other resources. I wanted to see what resources were out there for me to get better at teaching these kettlebells. Right. And uh, when I looked at the local market, kettlebells were so new right then. People, we were getting strange looks all the time when we're heaving these big balls of steel. And uh, so there wasn't anything out there. And so, so there's no education out there for trainers? There, there was very, very little education out there, next to none. It was all coming from overseas. So there was resources from people like Pavel Susseline and Steve Cotter and, and pioneers in the West, but they were American. Right. And so we, um, we got our hands on as much information as possible and uh, we wanted to learn as much as possible. And uh, so what we did is we decided to look at who the best was in the world uh, with kettlebells and teaching kettlebells and we came across a guy called Vasily Ginko, a Latvian guy, seven time world champion in the sport of kettlebells and uh, we flew him out here for four intensive days to really learn under his tutelage and uh, learn everything that we could and just immerse ourselves in his knowledge and then from that we decided to create a course where we can really have trainers uh, better skilled and not only demonstrating and doing the kettlebell skills themselves but better teaching those skills and translating those skills into their clients. And um, so yeah, I, I guess our philosophy, our motto is about making trainers uh, better at using kettlebells, so then that translates into their clients. Right, and I guess, you know, this has come about the last couple of years. I mean, when did, when did Australians do kettlebells? So we started start? off in Sydney, uh, Sydney Kettlebells three years ago. We had a brand... Uh, so it was Sydney Kettlebells. It was Sydney Kettlebells. And then we had a, a restructuring. Mm -hmm. uh, we were getting demand from not just people located in Sydney, but we were getting demand from all over Australia. And so in January last year, so 2011, January last year, we restructured the business, we rebranded the business, we brought some important people on board, and we uh, are now the Australian Institute of Kettlebells. Um, I like it, I like the name, makes sense. Um, obviously people in Perth, uh, probably be hard to book into a Sydney oh, kettlebells really? session, I guess. Yeah. yeah, so it's just about opening it up. Yeah. And uh, it's just about sharing what we do with more people and, and that rebranding enabled that to happen. Uh, I guess we talk about turning points in the business. For us, it came in April 2011. Mm -hmm. And that was when after some time uh, speaking to Fitness Australia and uh, lobbying with Fitness Australia and proposing to Fitness Australia, we had our course approved, and that was a that was a real turning point for so us. So you got CECs with the course. We, we got CECs. And before with our this, there was no CECs. No. So trainers were doing it as a labour of love. Yeah. We were doing it as a labour of love, but our numbers were low, oh. and uh, the opportunities yeah. weren't uh, weren't as many as they are now. And so in that date there, then everything sort of switched for you guys. Yeah, it was that was a critical turning point. Every business has a critical turning point. That was ours. That was when things really just turned upside down and, and uh, it, it was incredible, it was fantastic. From that, from that day, the demand for our courses has just grown tenfold and uh, it's just been a, a terrific journey in the, the last 
12 to kind of 15 months now we're coming up. And tell me about the journey. I mean, I know that we're in your studio. So you've got a you've got a private studio here in Coogee. Yep, correct. Um, somewhere in this studio here where you've got you know, group training and training and that sort of stuff. Totally just separate business. So you're a bit of a, um, you call yourself an entrepreneur, a business, a, a, you know, a person that likes a few different things on the go. Is that is that where you've come and, and created this institute of kettlebells from? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I like to create. It's in my nature to create. Uh, I love the fitness. I think trainers. I, love, I think all trainers love to create. We we are creating beasts. I think. I mean, I, I thought people <laughs> I know we always like to keep creating. Yeah, well, I, I love this industry, and I see great opportunities uh, for people to further themselves, whether it's a trainer furthering themselves in their education, whether it's a corporation furthering their workforce by getting them healthier, whether it's an individual that just wants to, to get healthier, lose, lose some body fat and just uh, change their lives. There's great opportunities out there. We're in a terrifically rewarding industry. And it's, for me, it's just about identifying those. How can I help uh, these different people in these different areas yep. and, um, and creating a business or a product or a service around it. Well, this is getting raw and I'd like to know, um, i like to know, I guess, struggles of, of, of running businesses as well and then we can talk about the success as well. One of the struggles you said was um, April when you didn't have CECs accredited. Was that, I guess, uh, how long would you have gone without CECs being accredited? Would you continue to go through that journey? I, it, would, it was getting tougher and tougher, to be perfectly honest. I love uh, teaching people uh, a number of different kettlebell skills and, and going through that process, but it was, we were losing money at that point in time. We, we, we weren't making any money. It was, it was tough. It was a labour of love. Yep. Uh, most definitely a labour of love. And so, yeah, I think... Tell me some numbers that... Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm flicking everywhere here. Um, so when you're at that before that pre CEC stage, what sort of numbers were you doing at a seminar? A we were getting anywhere from kind of four to ten. If we four were ten, yeah, okay, yeah. So ten with ten was kind of a, what we were maxing out on. So okay. that was as good as it got for us. Right, and then now, what sort of numbers are you getting at these events? Oh, look, uh, in the last few weeks alone, we've uh, we've sold out Brisbane and Sydney at over close to thirty participants. So that's where we've captured huge, huge, huge shift. Huge shift, absolutely massive. We were, uh, yeah, our numbers have increased seven, eight fold from uh, what we were getting. And that's consistent across the country. So we have our stronger cities, but those numbers have consistently increased. And I mean, we go to Canberra, we've got 20 plus trainers. We go to Newcastle, we've got 20 plus trainers. We go across to Perth, we've got 20 plus trainers. So yeah. The so numbers... how do you do your marketing to get these trainers to the events? You know, I'm a bit interested in that. Um, I've seen your website, it's it's pretty good. I mean, you're getting through websites, you're getting through industry bodies. Where are people finding you? Yeah, look, it's 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 multifaceted. We we just don't have one approach. I guess the way I think about marketing is you've got to have a number of different lines in the ocean, yep. and uh, it's the same ocean we're targeting trainers. But you're going to get different trainers are going to bite different lines, and so you've got to have different pieces of bait out there as well. And so we use a lot of uh, social media. We have. Uh, a fantastic Facebook page. We've got over 2,000 people on that. Yeah. It's really interactive and we put a lot of free content up there. That's one of our big things. Uh, we've professionally filmed over 20 videos that we give for free. Uh, we have an email uh, that we send out to our database every two weeks with a, with a really scientific uh, article attached to that. And so we've got you know a couple of thousand people reading that. I think we're up to about 3,000 people now on our email uh, list. We've done our search engine optimization, so we're making sure that when people type in kettlebell courses that they're finding us. And we're also you know leveraging Fitness Australia and you know get reaching their database by going through some of their advertising um, yeah. options as well. And also, it's word of mouth is, is really driving our business. And, you know, we've had over 700 people do our course in the, in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And people are talking and uh, we're getting a lot of people that, uh, you know, work at the same gyms now doing our courses as well. It's getting around. Word's getting around, which is good. Um, and this is where, the, I guess, you're seeing the industry shift before it actually happens. And that's where, I guess, I want, you know, that's what Getting Raw is all about, is to, is to find the industry leaders that are seeing the shift and they create a kettlebell business. Although creating another totally business that that is that is is happening once the shift is coming, which is you, you started and then the shift came. And, you know, yeah, and it's there. and it's about identifying those shifts as well. So we're evolving. We're not just a kettlebell business anymore. Uh, you know, last year we had we got our power bag course accredited, so we got the first 
ever power bag course accredited in Australia. Yep. Uh, this year we got our battling ropes course accredited. We now have the first ever battling ropes course accredited in Australia. So it's about moving where the industry is moving and it's about identifying what is uh, what trainers uh, can use to get great results, uh, to make their sessions dynamic, fun, um, but also get great results for their clients, and then creating a course around that piece of equipment. So we've identified the kettlebells initially, uh, now the power bags and the battling ropes. So we're evolving. We're, we're now we're the education behind yeah. the equipment. Education behind the equipment. Awesome. Yeah. I like it. That's very it's very cool. Um, You've got a couple of other businesses too. Let's quickly touch on those. Yes, I know certainly. that you're about to go into a bit of a training and filming session. So, what's your other businesses? I mean, you're at the studio here now. Um, tell me a bit about that and your other corporate wellness company you have too. Yeah, absolutely. So, Coastal Bodies and Kuji is my first fitness business. So, I started it three and a half years ago, and uh, it's, it's just a little little PT studio and in Coogee and uh, it's a terrific area. We've got seven trainers that work from here. Yep. Um, you know, we do anywhere up to about 100 sessions per week out of here and uh, and it's just a terrific environment. And um, yeah, very, very fortunate to have a great team where we, we just, you know, and a, and a great number of fantastic clients as well. And so that's our the PT studio business. Um, I guess what we do is very, um, very attentive, high-level personal training as well. So we do a lot of education as it's very good for boutique in here as well, isn't it? It is. It is. It's. It's. We really wanted to get away from the the bigger gym model and people that don't feel comfortable in that environment. We wanted to create a small community environment, yeah. and um, that's what we have. A lot of our clients live locally, and um, so we've got a nice little local community here. And then yeah, the corporate health corporate health results is. Uh, we started over 12 months ago and that really came about uh, from some of the requests I was getting from local businesses mm. and uh, some of the success we had after implementing programs with those local businesses. So you implemented programs based on corp- Coastal Bodies where we are now um, to corporate companies and then you said, okay, I think there's a need in the market here. Let's go create a business out of it. Is that Absolutely. Of yeah. yeah, so I saw that... I, I saw that we were doing a lot of terrific things, um, that we were getting terrific results for the participants, and it was great as uh, workplaces were having a terrific culture around health and fitness, uh, individuals were getting uh, great results, the rapport amongst workforces increased, yeah. and that was really encouraging, and we, we had a great model, we created a model, and so I'm now replicating that model across Australia, and we've had the great uh, great fortune of being able to implement that into government organisations, both at a national level, at a local level, uh, to private corporations, in, in Brisbane and Melbourne, and uh, we've got one in Adelaide coming yep. up, another one in Gold Coast. So you seem busy to me. Yeah, absolutely. How do you manage it all? What's uh, the trick? Trick: uh, a very understanding wife. Yeah, uh, it would be one of the first uh, and supportive wife. Uh, a terrific team around me. So I've got a couple of administrators, uh, terrific presenters, terrific trainers, uh, and just a lot of terrific practitioners. So a happy wife, happy life, and then a uh, good team of trainers around you. Absolutely, and I guess also the understanding that you need to let go as well. So really, and this has been a big learning for me, yep. is, uh, you know, everyone says delegate, most people abdicate, uh, so they just give it away, but it's actually educating the person as to being very, very clear on what needs to be done, supporting them in that, and then actually, um, and then delegating that work to them. Pulling away. Pulling away. Very good tip. Delegating and actually pulling away. Not just not just giving, not saying giving the keys, giving the keys and the key ring to them and actually let them do the work. Absolutely. That's so it. holding on a little bit, eh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's been... Uh, that's been a challenge, and it's something that I'm still getting used to. But oh, it's always going to be a continual challenge when you're a business owner. It's hard just to give out, give the keys away, and you know, and trust that is those people until that work. Until yeah, the job that's right. So to evolve done. and grow, you, you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, people. A lot of people talk about systems, but it is you know, the people that preach systems are right on the money. You have to have good systems in place. You need to have clear procedures in place as well that people follow and you can't leave anything grey everything's got to be black and white so I like uh, it no grey black and white or all black and white can't see that offence no 
Awesome. Thanks for your time. I know you've got to rush. I know you've got to uh, do your kettlebells training to your team. Yep, so I'll let you right. go. And um, I, I, I really look forward to seeing the, the success of the kettlebell industry and, and where the next educational boom is about to take place. And I'm sure you'll be right there at the front, front forefront of it. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Thanks.